Hey, I'm Joanna. And I'm Steve. And today we're going to show you how we converted our toy hauler RV garage into our master bedroom. We have a 2021 Grand Design Momentum 397 toy hauler. We decided to turn the original master bedroom into our boys' bunk room so that we could have space in the garage for our bedroom and office area. And we'll put a link to that video in the description below. Since there was another full bathroom back here but no storage space, we removed the shower to create a closet for us. We also created another video showing that entire process, so we'll include that link below. One of the main questions we get when people see videos or photos of our back bathroom closet is, well, since you took the shower out, where do you shower now? And the answer is, we don't. Right? We're just dirty people. Ew. Just kidding. We actually have another shower in our main bathroom in the front section of the RV. Oh, you almost had me. The first thing we did was remove the couches and bed platform from the Happy Jack system. In case you're not familiar with toy haulers, the garage portion is used for hauling toys. This includes motorcycles, side-by-sides, ATVs, and things of that nature. Since we weren't going to be hauling anything but bicycles back there, and later on a kayak, it was basically a blank slate that we can make into whatever we wanted. The Lippert Happy Jack system is a motorized lift that raises the couches and bed to make room for the toy while you're driving. We also removed the black diamond patterned metal that surrounded the lower portion of the walls. Next, we sanded and caulked the walls and added primer around the edges and corners. We're getting some work done. We decided to remove the two open cubbies up on the ceiling because we couldn't think of anything we'd be able to store in them and they'd mostly be in the way once we expanded the bed platform. We removed the shower from the bathroom and we'll show you how we plugged the sewer drain and hole it left behind in the floor in a second. Then we gave everything a coat of paint and primer. We have an entirely separate video on how we renovated the rear bathroom, but suffice to say, I capped the drain pipe and covered it with some plywood and taped it down flat. Since we couldn't redo the flooring in here, I just covered that piece of wood with a thin rug, which you'll see at the end of the video. The current wall was way too thin. It was fiberboard that had studs that spanned about 36 inches, not really making it too sturdy. So the boys and I ripped some half inch plywood to span from stud to stud and make shiplap, which would be much stronger for attaching shelves. I also added a couple extra shelves in the medicine cabinet to utilize the space better. Since we weren't going to be driving any toys into the garage and we wanted to add some nicer flooring, we had to level out the back portion where it sloped down to connect to the ramp or patio. With the help from my little buddy Oliver, we installed some 2x4s which we cut into a wedge shape and then added 3 quarter inch plywood on top to level out the floor. So you're not straight, so now you're straight. There you go.
We wanted the room to feel more homey, so we cut some 1 8 inch plywood into strips and installed them vertically to create a shiplap look. To create uniform spacing, I used nickels in between each shiplap board. I made a template for the pieces that would need to curve around the windows. The RV came with a queen-size bed platform in the garage, but we really prefer a king size so Steve built a custom one. We have another video detailing exactly how he did this, but here's the condensed version. After cutting some 2x4s to size, Oliver and I stained them and then added one coat of polyurethane. We have uh, decided to make a bed out of the top happy jack system. Um, the top happy jack system has four through bolts um, in each of the corners, and that's what uh, raises and lowers the bed. Um, there's also a bottom portion that used to connect the, the two pull-out kind of couches, benches for the table that used to go right here. We decided to use the top one as opposed to the bottom one. The bottom one had kind of like these floppy uh, arms and on there they even warn you that it's supposed to be supported. Um, and so we decided to use the top ones. The problem with the top ones is they're also kind of floppy. They've got through pins um, is how they originally come. So we decided to bolt it down. When we decided to bolt it down, we're like, oh yeah, this is, this is a great idea. The problem with that is this right here. So when you get in bed and it's gonna be cantilevered over, it can, it can lift up and down. And so what we needed to do was build these, these little L brackets and these L brackets are actually gonna attach down here at the bottom, um, which I'll do right now. They attach to the bottom, you just screw in. down and now you can't you get no movement whatsoever so we don't have to worry about the bed deciding to tip forward so just some little L brackets connected to a, a bolt underneath the happy jack system and that should uh should do it <laughs> I then spray painted all the metal hardware black and measured out where the additional 2x4s would go to create the platform that the slats would sit on. I cut several 1x3s which we painted white then screwed them into the bed frame spaced out every 3.5 inches. We let the boys help us test it out. I cut the head and footboard for us. And I stained them and applied polyurethane. Steve designed some awesome nightstands for us. Since the bottom half would be covered by the mattress, he designed an opening on the side with a shelf and an opening on the bottom in the front. I cut holes in the side so we could feed power cords through to be able to charge our phones up on the bed next to us.
The footboard is attached with L brackets and the headboard is attached with metal strips that are screwed into the bed frame. We removed the metal tie-down latches in the floor, which we had to do to achieve a flat surface to lay the flooring on top of, and used Great Stuff spray foam to fill in the holes. I also rolled out some thin underlayment to help insulate and quiet the floor. Next it was time for the flooring. We used Luxury Vinyl Plank, also known as LVP, for its durability and we even found a really close color match to our vinyl flooring in the main part of the RV. We were finally able to start moving some furniture in. We already had an IKEA drawer set and dresser, and we bought another matching IKEA drawer set to use as a platform for a desktop. Another reason we wanted a toy hauler is so we could bring our exercise bike with us. I had a Peloton bike for a year and loved it, but we weren't sure if we'd have good enough internet on the road to be able to stream the classes. So we sold it and bought a Schwinn IC4 bike instead. Ready? I guess so. Oh my gosh, I love you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're taller than I am, so this is nothing for me. I'm still looking out here. You are way up here, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's fine. I almost could just do it under here. It's actually pretty ironic because we've had great internet on the road and we could have kept the Peloton bike. We never could get used to the Schwinn because the metric controls and the pedals were so different, so we actually ended up selling it a few months later while we were in Montana. Schwinn is hard to say. Schwinn. You think that's a Schwinn? I made the desktop for our office from Butcher Block picked up at Home Depot. We wanted it to sit flush against the wall, but the Happy Jack posts were in the way. I had to get creative, so I cut out little sections for them to fit into. We then stained the wood with the same color as everything else, which was Minwax Early American and added several coats of polyurethane. I painted our dresser knobs gold to match all the other gold hardware in the RV. Since we removed the door on the bathroom, Steve installed a wooden curtain rod and I hemmed a curtain panel from Target to fit there for privacy. But we normally just use the main bathroom in the front of the RV. Next, Steve installed some string lights underneath the bed frame. We knew it would be sort of dark under there with the mattress above, so we thought this was a pretty and functional way to add lighting. power to the top of the bed for our lights and for our cell phones, we had to create a channel on the back of the Happy Jack system using zip ties. Then it was finally time to add the mattress. Thank you. It was a little tricky getting it onto the bed platform because we couldn't lower the bed all the way since the desk and dresser were already installed, as well as the headboard. Okay. Push. Snap. Go. Oh, I 
like a glove. Since we covered the tie-down points in the floor, we had to come up with another way to secure our bicycles on travel days. Steve found an awesome bike rack solution and modified it to work in the RV. We've got a ton of footage of me making these bike racks. If it's something that you guys are interested in, let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to post it. On travel days, we load all the bicycles into the bike racks and just strap them down with a ratchet strap. Here's the final reveal of our toy hauler garage to master bedroom conversion. like this video, we'll leave links to those other videos we mentioned on the next screen. Please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them, and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.